Hello everyone, this is the Utah PTA Pulse Podcast. Every child, one voice. We're coming to you as our podcast here at the Utah PTA offices in Murray, Utah. I am not your host, but one of the co-hosts, Mike Williams, Director of Communications. To the right of me, your left, is... Angeli Ado, the Family Life Commissioner. <laughs> and I'm Kemi Witchers, the Community Engagement Commissioner. And today we're talking to you about advocacy, especially advocacy conference coming up September 27th, 2024. So if you're listening in 2025, <laughs> don't come on September 27th. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's be chill for a minute. Okay. You know, are you going to do a lead-in question this time? Yeah. What? I, ha- I had a good one, and now I forgot it. <laughs> okay. If you were going to be a superhero, which one would you be and why? Ooh. Um, Superman. Flying. I, I, I always think it's weird when I've seen the Superman versus Batman. How could Batman win? Because Superman is just all powerful. What does but, Batman even do? Exactly. Here, let me throw this nunchuck at you. Well, he probably doesn't have nunchucks. That's Michelangelo. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> if any of you are DC, Marvel, <laughs> comic fans, I am not one of those guys. <laughs> but flying. Flying would be fun. Um... At, at the speed of a bullet. You know how much we could get done. Right? <laughs> yes, that would be awesome. Whatever I am, I want to not have to sleep so I can just work 24 <laughs> Okay, I changed my superhero. I don't want to sleep. <laughs> if you could not, so like, much to do. not sleep and not be tired, too, right? Yeah. Like, like, yeah, like you don't need sleep. You can just keep going and going. Okay, I think that's why I like Superman. Because, yeah, if I, I can't get to all these things, I'm like, but if I could go at the speed of a, a bullet... 567 miles an hour. Yep, speed of a mullet. (laughs) (laughs) What speed is that? (laughs) The PTA here. The party speed, or well, it's the business in the front speed and the party in the back. Speedy in the back. (laughs) There you go. There you go. (laughs) Okay, so what was your. (laughs) I know, what's your superhero? Uh, I really like. She's not really a superhero, but I really like Elastigirl from The Incredibles. Oh, yeah. That's a good one. Because yeah. I'm like, if I could just, like, reach over there and, like, get the thing or, you know, like, I think that'd be yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only one I can think of is She-Ra. Growing up, like, we used to watch He-Man and She-Ra, and I just thought She-Ra was awesome. I don't even know who she is. <laughs> He-Man's co- counterpart. Right? She's She-Ra. I don't know. I, I don't so need to look it up. Yeah. That's not my genre at all. <laughs> She-Ra. Look her up. I'm going to. Although not the new She-Ra. Like the old school She-Ra. Okay. Apparently they revamped it. But I didn't watch it. Hey, but Incredibles 3 is coming out. Oh. I did see that. I'm excited so about am that. I. I do love the Incredibles group. Mm-hmm. There's some good movies. Yeah. They do some good stuff. Yeah. It's fun. Okay, so advocacy conference. It's coming up. Mm-hmm. And what did we learn about it in our discussion tonight? Who should attend? Everyone. <laughs> Especially. Oh yeah. Especially local presidents. <laughs> local presidents. Guess what? It says in your handbook on page twenty four that you need to attend advocacy conference. Did you know that? I did not know that. Mm-hmm. We're always learning. We're yeah. on the Utah VDA board. <laughs> I love that we're always learning, okay? Like, I'm like a big proponent of always learning something for your whole life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so. Anyways, we learned that. So if you're a local president and you're not signed up, you better get signed up because you're supposed to be there. Well, and everyone else should be there, too. Yeah, I think it's really for everyone. I think it's nice to see that different aspect of PTA and the things that we do beyond just, you know, um, the local schools. Yeah. And where can you go to sign up? Um, it's going to be on the Utah PTA website soon. Soon. By the time you're listening to it, yeah, it'll yeah, be there. It'll probably be there by the time you've listened to this podcast. It'll, it should be there. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, so anyways, this year, um, 
we kind of had fun picking our theme. Um, us commissioners, we had a meeting and we were deciding what our theme should be and it was actually like really fun, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always fun. Actually, it's, the commissioner meetings are really enjoyable. They're always fun. We always have a blast together and we're, we're the fun part. It's fine. We're fun. So we wanted to, um, I don't know the word I'm looking for. I think we came up with this idea from High School Musical, like we're all in this together. That's kind of how it all started. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of a joke at first, but then it kind of turned into this real thing about like the importance of we're all in this to get together. And so our theme is uniting voices, empowering change. We're all in this together. And I think that is exactly what is the mission of PTA. Mm -hmm. It's right behind us. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that really is what we're trying to do, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep. And I think it's going to be a really great conference. So some of the classes, um, well, let me tell you what we do at Advocacy Conference first. Mm -hmm. So we start all together with a nice welcome, and then we introduce you to all our, um, our advocacy team, which is us commissioners and some of our specialists. And um, you kind of get to know what we're doing for ad advocacy. And then we have an awesome keynote. Keynote's to TBA right now. There will be one. Um, and then we break into some classes, and then this year um, we're also going to be talking about our ballot initiatives and the income tax amendment, because those are really important, mm -hmm. and we're going to be um, voting in November, so we need to make sure we know what we're talking about. And then we have, so we have classes, and then we have the ballot initiatives, we have lunch. Um, this year we're doing lunch from Zupa's, and I'm really excited about lunch. Mm -hmm. I'm always excited about lunch every day. <laughs> it's fine. I really like lunch. You know what? It's the only meal that's for me every day. No one else is there to eat lunch with me, so it's just for me, okay? <laughs> so you can enjoy. Yes. You can take your time. So you, you can, can get your lunch and you can enjoy with us. It's a working lunch. <laughs> And we're going to go over our legislative priorities, which are what us commissioners have thought of that we want to focus on for this year for Utah PTA. And then we're also going to be talking about bylaws. And bylaws, it sounds like it's going to be boring, but it's not. It's actually like you learn a lot, and it's kind of fun, I think. I don't know. Well, and it's, it's kind of a big one this year because we are restructuring or hoping to restructure PTA. And so the bylaws that are written up that we're voting on are reflective of that restructure. So it's going to be, it's going to get a, a good, important meeting that you'll want to be to. Yeah. And this is one of those times where you get to use your voice. You get to come, you can express your opinions, and you can vote. And I think that's really important when you join an organization that you get to be a part of it. This is like one of those chances where you actually get to be like a part of it and be in on the action. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Yeah. Well, and just to kind of reiterate, everyone is welcome to come to advocacy conference. This isn't just for your, you know, your board or your executive committee. This is for everyone on your PTA to be able to attend. And, and it is a, an important meeting because we do make decisions regarding PTA rolling forward. Yeah. So let me tell you how much it costs. So you know, I forgot to pull up how much it costs though. <laughs> it's fine. Do, 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 okay, do, do, so do, do, do. if you're a PTA member, it's going to be $10 to attend. And then if you're a non-PTA member, it's $20, and then you can order a lunch for $12. Now, we have to have those costs because we have to pay for the facility that we're at. That's the only reason why we charge, so that we're not going in the red. And then you can order your lunch. It's nice having your lunch already there. And then... We also have on-site registration, so if you're feeling like, oh, I can't attend, and then all of a sudden you can, please come. We really want you to come, and you can just register there. Well, and I mean, that's another bonus for getting a membership, because it's cheaper, you know, your membership plus the the registration is a lot less than yeah. the... Everything is always cheaper if you're a member, like, mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. all the things. Mm -hmm. There are perks to being a member of PTA. Yeah, I love it. So, let's talk about the classes, yeah? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first class I'm actually really excited about. So we, we have two sessions of classes and three classes in each session. And the first session um, has one class called Building Trust with Teachers, Administrators, and Legislators. 
And I think that's so important because, um, especially as a PTA, like we want to make sure that we're welcome in our schools and in our district and that legislators also know that we're like a power player, you know, we've got, we've got something to say. We're the largest parent organization in the state. And I think that's really important. And, um, that's going to be taught by Dr. Shane Farnsworth. Um, he's the Alpine superintendent. So I'm excited about that one. That's cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think we're the largest children's advocacy. Advocacy, group. yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I think it is. Yeah. I don't know if we're the largest parent group. Are we? No. We might be that too. I don't know. <laughs> Why are you talking about advocacy? Okay. Hello, Google. Mike will Google it for us so we give you the right information. Okay, then our second class that session is called Advocating for the One. And this is um this is gonna be a really great class on how to advocate for your um for your like own kids. And what they need at school, and the things that they're sh- and the things that they're struggling with, and I really, I like, I really like that one. Yeah, well, and I liked when we were talking about it because I think a lot of times we do focus on the kids that maybe have the IEPs or you know our special needs, but I think all of our kids have you know those those needs and those special special things you know to them that we need to know how to advocate for them in the school. Yeah, yeah. And I think teachers, they love it if you can come to them, like, with the things that your, te- with, that your student needs. Mm-hmm. You know, they want to try to accommodate for all the things so that your school, that your kid can learn and be in their best environment. One of the things that I saw, Family Life Commissioner here, when I was the PTA president a couple of years ago, I was, like, looking through National PTA's website, and the Family Life Commissioner had these little, um, little packets, I guess, for each grade. Like your kindergartner is going into school, what should you expect? What are the the milestones they should reach? Da da da. All these things. I was like, oh, this is wonderful. The, the family life commissioner. I want a family life commissioner. I never got one, but I wanted <laughs> one. And I was like, I would just assign the family life commissioner. So that's kind of you know when I think of uh, you know kids and what we can do and help them and help the teachers. You know, anyway, that's what yeah. I thought of. Yeah, I'm excited. So that sounds like an awesome class. Yeah. That's one I'm going to. Well, and, and learning that, or well, not learning because we already know this, but just that idea of like we're working as a team. Like it's not teachers versus parents. We're a team together. And the more that we communicate with each other, the better we can meet the needs of, of children. Yeah. yeah. The next class we have for that hour is our PTA resolutions class. And it says PTA resolutions, why your voice matters. And... I'm really excited for that one too. I'm excited for all the classes. I'm just gonna clone myself so I can attend all the classes, okay? But this one I think is really special because um, sometimes we don't know what to do with our voice. We have an opinion or we have something we wanna share and we don't know what to do. Yeah. And we don't, we don't know how to make change. We see that change needs to happen but we don't know what the steps are, mm-hmm. you know? Or we do know what the steps are and they're scary. Yeah, because I know a lot of people that, I mean, even sending an email is a terrifying thing. Yeah. So that one will be really good. Well, that'll be good. I Going to the um, conference, well, what do we call it? The one that with the big one. Convention? Convention. convention. I keep wanting to call it conference. Yeah, convention. It's they, leadership conference. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. And they did resolutions there, right? And yeah, I was like, whoa. But the more I was listening to it, understanding, oh, we can make a change. We can come up with these resolutions. We can bring this to the legislature. We can do all kinds of things that, mm-hmm. that can actually make a, make a change. Yeah. Well, and maybe we ought to clarify a little bit what a resolution is and why, why that's a cool, well, not a new, it's not unique to Utah PTA, but, you know, just talking about resolutions are the guidelines that we use when we go you know, to the legislature and, you know, advocate for or against things, we are, we are guided by the resolutions that we vote in. So our general membership votes on those. It's not just, you know, our executive committee sitting in a meeting going, yeah, I think we should do this. I think that sounds great. It is actually voted on by our general membership. And so this is where, you know, that whole you guys have the power comes in is here you're voting on these resolutions and you're helping us make decisions on what we're going to what we're going to prioritize and what we're going to do um, well, even, during the legislative session even local members can just they could write a resolution too yeah you know mm-hmm. sometimes um you guys are um boots on the ground so you know of things that we don't always see 
Well, and if you're worried about writing one, but you have an idea for one, reach out to a commissioner mm -hmm. and say, you know, I have this idea, but I don't, I don't know the first thing to do. Yeah. I love it. Thanks for explaining that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, awesome. no, that's really great. All right. Session two um, is kind of like finding your why in PTA. And I think that's just important, especially just like in advocacy in general, like finding why you want to be an advocate and and the why of what you're advocating for, you know. A lot of us start with just advocating for our own child, you know. Sometimes we have a child that needs more than our other children and we have to advocate for them a little bit more. Yeah. And that's where we often start and then we realize that we can advocate for other things and other children too. And I know you've said before that, you know, a lot of times your why changes, you mm -hmm. know, based on circumstances or, or what you're doing. And, and that's okay. And that's good. That means, you know, that we're growing and changing. So it's okay for your why yeah. to change and to morph as you, I mean, I know when I first started out, my why in PTA was very different than it is now. And I, you know, didn't even know about the whole advocacy piece of it. So. Yeah. Same. Same. Our next class for that session um, is, we don't have a title for it yet, um, but it's about um, trauma-informed schools. And a whole bunch of us commissioners are gonna get together and teach that. And um, trauma-informed schools are basically where we're teaching about positive childhood experiences and realizing that our kids have experienced trauma, but also that our our teachers have experienced trauma too and how we're dealing with that in the classroom and um, what can we do to make things better because we all know that if we're suffering we can't learn mm -hmm. you know if our basic needs aren't being met we can't learn and if our teachers basic needs aren't being met either they're not going to be the best teacher that they can be you know so I think that's going to be a really powerful class I'm really excited for that one <laughs> Okay, and then our last class, um, it's called It Takes a Village, Resources for Title I Refugees and English Language Learning Families Through PTA, and I think that is really great, too. Um, I feel like in PTA, we kind of, sometimes we don't think about those families, maybe just in general, not just in mm -hmm. PTA, but in general, we don't think about those families, and the things that we're doing don't work for those families yeah. or those schools and just knowing how to reach out and and include them and help them be a part of mm -hmm. are, are you teaching that class Kimmy? i'm not teaching it but i'm helping she's putting it together <laughs> i'm not teaching it but yeah it's it's going to be a neat class because we really want to give ptas those tools you know to be inclusive to to everyone and to make them feel a part of that that school community and the pta can you expound on, sorry, I heard Title I. How, how, what's, what's that component? So Title I schools... You, oh, I, I'm in oh, the Title I. I just want to like how, have you um, yeah, like in my So my area is a very heavily, a lot of, um, oh, I mean, all of the elementary schools in my area are Title I. And so um, because of that, a lot of times you have a lower income, so you have two or um, you know, parents are working more than one job, so they don't necessarily have that time to come in to a PTA meeting, but they still wanna be involved in their children's lives and just strategies and ways that you can involve them without them having to you know, figure out a way to, um, to be to all of the PTA meetings or, or to be, so a way for them to be involved and to be a part of PTA without necessarily having to come to the meetings and, and all of that. I don't know if that makes sense. No, that makes sense. And, <laughs> and anyone listening, that's the one that I'd like to go to. I, I have, so both of my children, well, three of my children, we're in uh, Title I. We have, we'd send one to a Title I, another to a uh, Title I ACC program. And um, just the resources there are great and all these things. And yes, we, one of the elementary schools that I'm uh, uh, council president over, uh, has a lot of um, refugees from West Africa and they come into the PTA table and they don't speak English but their child does and they they like oh I want to volunteer okay so they 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 pay their due and they they want to volunteer but they just it's it's a hard how do we get them to do PTA things mm -hmm. they they just want to they want to be involved 
So it'd be fun to mm -hmm. hear what's presented in that class to help us help some of these people that want to be involved. Yeah. They want mm -hmm. to. Well, and even overcoming some of those cultural differences, because, you know, I talked to a friend um, and she's, you know, she's from Colombia, and she says, you know, there you don't go to the school. The school, you know, does their thing. You don't get in their business. They don't get in your business kind of thing. And so I think it is important for us to know, you know, there's that cultural barrier, so helping them understand it. here it's okay. We want you in the school. And, you know, little things like that that you don't necessarily think about, that they're trying to be respectful, and them coming to the school is actually a disrespectful thing in their wow. mind. And, and kind of seeing it a different way. Wow, yeah, that's cool. I think that's going to be a great one. Yeah. So it sounds like it's going to be a great conference. Mm -hmm. We can learn a lot. Yeah. So I hope you guys all come. Did you say well, the location? Oh, yeah. Midville Middle School. Yeah, okay. Midville Middle School. We were hoping for East High School. We tried really hard. <laughs> we did. We tried really hard. But to the we, day, Midville Middle School. We are so grateful that Midville Middle School is willing to host our advocacy conference. We are always grateful when the schools are willing yes. to host PTA things, and mm -hmm. it really shows a partnership with PTA, too. So. Yeah, yeah. We're really grateful for that. We're all in this in the, together. Yeah. Mm -hmm.